Uh, I'm Rich Chappelle. Um, I'm a number theorist, among other things. And uh, this is a new toy I've been playing with. Uh, it works sometimes and not others, but here's a case where it works. Um, I will not explain Pollard Row to you, except to say it's been around for uh, 40 years now. And mostly it's used for factoring, but a few other things. Um, let's move on. Okay, here's a Diophantine equation. I'm gonna try to solve this in whole numbers. What I'm looking for is a number that can be split into the sum of a cube and a fourth power in two different ways. And I've written this as this Diophantine equation, a cubed plus b to the fourth and so on. Okay, what you do, you make a random function. Now ra by random, it's more like a, a hash function. It has to produce reproducible results on the same input. But other than that, you'd prefer there not be any particular easy formula for it. And for my f, my function f, I've chosen to make it um, this number temp modulo 1019 and modulo 257. Those are somewhat random functions of temp. And you cube them, take the fourth power, add them together. And then this magic number offset allows me to get a bunch of different results by only changing offset. Now I want you to sort of imagine a sea of integers laid out in the plane, and some of those will be of the form, of the shape, a cube plus a fourth power. And imagine those you draw circles around. Now that's not very many, it's not a large percentage, but it is an infinite number. And then you could connect those circles in a directed graph. And that's the effect of this function f, is it defines such a graph. And if you change offset, then you get a different graph. And here is a little sub-piece of one of those graphs. You start from a random integer n, and it goes, you apply f to that and get f of n, and then you get f of f of n, and f of f of f of n, and, and I've gone to subscripts after that to count the number of applications of f. And I didn't mention it, but if you looked closely at how I defined my function, it actually has a maximum value after you've applied f one or two times. And that means since you have a finite number of integers, it's going to loop. And since it's going to loop, unless it starts out in a loop, there are going to be two places that come together into one place. In this picture, I've got f2 and f11 both coming into f3. That's what I want for what I'm doing. Okay, I have a very slight digression on how you find loops in a graph. Uh, this is, was known, you know, I don't know, 50 years ago, more than 50 years ago, back in the, the deep dark ages of computing. If you're applying a function over and over again, and you don't have the memory around to keep a record of all your f's, or you don't want to spend time comparing values, then what you can do is a, something I call turtle and rabbit. They both start out at n, and turtle makes one step, and then rabbit makes two steps. And so rabbit runs way ahead of turtle. Rabbit eventually falls into the loop. And after a while, turtle will fall into the loop as well. And then rabbit will catch up to turtle from behind. And you will notice that because the, the, the number that's keeping track of rabbit and the one that's keeping track of turtle are now equal. That's your key. That's the only storage you need for just a couple of values for rabbit and turtle. You also want a counter to find out how long it took them to get the match. Now, there's something called the birthday paradox, which I won't much mention, except to say it implies that for a random graph, the size of the loop and the size of the tail are both about square root of the number of nodes involved. So with the particular function I had defined, we start with n equals this random number, 314, and so on. <laughs> An offset of 2300, and that's because I tried the first 2300. Rabbit laps turtle at step 582. That is to say, rabbit comes up from behind and stomps on the same cell as, as turtle in the graph after they've run 582 steps from these two values. And that means 582 applications of f is the same as 1,164 applications of f. Okay, now we start over with two turtles. 
but one of them has a head start of 582 steps, which may or may not put him in the loop. We don't need to know. We then run that forward and comparing waiting until we get a match on values. And that happens after 427 steps. So 427Fs is the same as that plus 582 more. However, we back up one, and we have that 426 is not the same as 426 plus 582. OK, we can then unwind the definition of f. And again, I'm leaving out details. It's not hard. And we discover this example of a number that's representable as a cube plus a fourth power two ways. And then some final notes. The actual number is uh, 255 million and change. It's by no means the lowest solution. Uh, the yield on this varies. In this case, I ran 10,000 examples and got about a dozen hits. A small tweak lets you use two different expressions on the left and right hand side. Uh, the required memory is tiny. That's wonderful. It means you could run it on GPUs, for example. And then finally, I'll mention that it worked for cube plus fifth power and didn't work for sum of three fifth powers, finding a coincidence. And that's it. <laughs>